The Ghanaian parliament recently voted a law prohibiting alphabet people, our brothers, from practicing and also getting married officially. It's maybe authorized in the US and some other places in the world. It's officially not authorized in Ghana. Unofficially, in many African countries, you cannot practice that. According to the ILGA, around 30 African countries currently ban homosexuality. In Mauritania, Nigeria, Uganda and Somalia, those in same-sex relationships could face the death penalty. Because it's perceived some type of way, traditionally, religiously, historically, and in many ways. So even though in many African countries you can see men who like being with other men, being alive, being active, being living their lives, officially, people don't quite accept it. Now, Ghana has gone further very recently they voted a law into parliament um some people pushing very very hard especially honorable samuel george sam george of ghana very strong very vocal let's hear what he has to say ghana is not the 51st state of the united states ghana is a sovereign state on its own the sovereign parliament of ghana has passed a bill and i think that matthew miller should be more interested in the light loss of life of americans children in american schools to gun violence are they concerned, you know? It knows where it matters and not where it doesn't matter. They are not invited in Ghana's local politics where our parliament has passed the law. So as you can see, Sam George, a Ghanaian politician, 39 years old. Very impressive, huh? 39. He's still very young. Very young, very strong, very vocal. 39, you know. It's just very sad because right now, nowadays, you see a lot of 39 years old just playing yeah just wasting time wasting energy and i think it doesn't matter in which direction you go just just a reminder to people that we should be as strong as we used to be you know back in time many many years ago africans uh revolutionary people were in their 30s okay kwame nkrumah uh thomas sankara Lumumba, all these big people were in their 30s when they freed Africa. Mama Winnie Mandela, when she was engaged into politics, when she was fighting, when she was a leader in a community, she was only 19 years old. But look at the 19 years old in 2024. Anyway, so Ghanaian parliament has come together to vote a law into prohibiting men to be with other men. Yeah, it's not authorized in Ghana. You cannot practice it. But it wasn't low. Now they sat together discussing and they've made it low. So whoever that practiced those things in Ghana, what's going to happen? You're going to be jailed. You're going to be jailed for five years. If you promote these things, meaning if you talk about it, if you fund it, if you provide information and motivation for it, you're going to go to jail for at least 10 years. Is this right? Well, this is Ghana. It's their country. Can they choose what they want? Well, I guess each country can choose whichever law is suitable for them. Now, what happened in Ghana was leaders of the communities, traditional leaders, spiritual leaders, meaning Muslims and Christians, came together. They were in synchrony together saying, we do not want this in Ghana. Okay, now, hold on a second. There's something happening now. The people that are being hurt the most about this new law in Ghana is the West. And you know, most of the time when we talk about the West, we all know what we're talking about. It's the United States of America. We also know that while back, America sent Kamala Harris in Africa to come and talk about the situation, try to push African nation into accepting the practices. You know, just let it be. Stop persecuting people. Nobody believed they should be persecuted. Stop doing all these things to these people. Let it be. And many African nations said no. They're not interested to do it. Kamal Harris went to Ghana and had a discussion with the president where many people believe the president was going to accept these practices in Ghana. Let me be clear about where we stand. First of all, for the American press who are here, you know that a great deal of, of work in my career has been to address human rights issues, equality issues across the board, including as it relates to the LGBT community. And I feel very strongly about the importance of supporting uh, the, the, the freedom and, and supporting and fighting for equality among all people and that all people be treated equally. I will also say that uh, this is an issue that we consider and I consider to be a human rights issue and that will not change. And that's perhaps the reason why many Ghanaians, including Parliament, pushed very hard for this law to become law. Sam George was very clear, saying, if Americans dare to do something against our economy, we're going to kick their businesses out of Ghana. 
if they try to do anything like they did in Uganda, we are going to make them pay. After Uganda passed the bill, the sanctions on the Speaker of Uganda's Parliament and on the sponsors of those bills, we will serve notice as well that if they replicate the same with our Speaker and members of Parliament, we will also take action against their business interests in our country. And I think that's a very strong statement. Now they have the law. It has been voted in Parliament. In Ghanaian practices, in order for law to really become law, it has to go to the President's office and he has to lay his signature. Now the President say he has not received these papers in his office yet. Into the details of the origin of this proposed law, which has yet to reach my desk. Let's try to find out how. How is that even possible? Ghana, like many other developing countries, benefit from funding coming from World Bank and IMF. Now, who is World Bank? Its main goals revolve around the eradication of poverty, and it funds specific projects which help them reach these goals, especially in poor countries. World Bank is that for countries. So a country that needs money for infrastructure, for development, for projects, they can go to World Bank and say, hey, we need some money from you. We're going to pay you back. And World Bank says, we're going to give you the money, provided you respect men that, you know, we're going to give you money, provided you respect our rules. And the rules generally is you have to repay the money back with a lot of interest, massive interest. And this has been operating this way for many, many years. Same for IMF. Now, things have changed recently. Recently, in order for you to get money from World Bank to try to do development and infrastructure of your country, you have to respect new rules. The new rules are you have to be democratic. Now, what does democratic mean in 2024? Democratic means you are doing things the way the West wants you to do them. In other words, if the West wants you to have laws that allow men to be husbands of other men, then you should be able to let that be. If you do not let your country or your people or your countrymen marry other men, then you're not democratic, according to the West and World Bank. Because obviously, World Bank is a project of the West. World Bank had promised about $4 billion to Ghana for development this year. And this is perhaps the reason why President Nana Akufo has not signed this into law. Because the finance minister ran into his office and said, Hey, hold on a second. If we sign this into law, we're not going to benefit from $4 billion that was promised to us from World Bank. Exactly like it's happened to Uganda. Let me just remind you here. Uganda, a while back, signed into law that men will not be with other... Yeah, it's a law engraved into Ugandan constitution now. And they receive a massive backlash because of that. Number one, the U.S. used to provide millions of dollars helping people living with HIV in Uganda. There was hundreds of millions of dollars that were allocated to people living with HIV in Uganda. But as soon as Uganda signed that into law, they cut the money. They stopped sending the money to Uganda. Now, many people ask this question, which I ask as well. If you are cutting the money away from Ugandan who are living with HIV because parliament has signed into law something that is absolutely nothing to do with them, were you really being genuine into giving them the money anyway? Because... People with HIV do not send laws into power. People send law into power as a parliamentarians and politicians. And we are making this law. We are making this law for ourselves. We are making this law for our children. We are making this law for the children of our children. How are you punishing the politician by punishing the people living with HIV? It makes no sense. So Uganda cannot borrow from World Bank anymore. That's the punishment they got from that. And because the president of Uganda is very vocal, he also said, we don't need anything from you anyway. Oh, and by the way, I'm taking a flight to Russia just to say hi to Vladimir Putin. Not because I'm invited, just because I can. The goal was to piss them more further, just to show them you cannot dictate on how we're going to live our lives in Uganda. Now, this is what's happening in Ghana right now. President Nana Akofo said he has not received the papers in his office. To the details of the origin of this proposed law, which has yet to reach my desk. The papers that were supposed to be signed and signed this law into law, into constitution in Ghana, where if you are a man that's attracted to other men, if you practice that openly, you're going to be arrested. So the law has been spoken into life, but the law has not been signed yet because obviously people are thinking about the $4 billion that could be missing by signing this law. Numerous people argue that the policy of America and the West in other African countries should be reviewed. Why does it feel like the policy of the West is a policy of teaching, is a policy of telling people how to live their lives, what laws to choose, 
which type of situation should be engraved into. Instead of having a policy like China that is a policy of development, I'm bringing you money to build your rail train. I'm bringing you fundings to sponsor your hospitals. Why isn't the relationship like that? Rather, the relationship with the West seems to be a relationship of lecturing. You are not democratic. We're not going to talk to you. You are not doing things as according to the West, so we're going to sanction you. You are not doing that, so we're sanctioning you. We sanction, we sanction. Just like Zimbabwe has been sanctioned. Just like Eritrea has been sanctioned. Just like Uganda has been sanctioned. Sanction, sanction, sanction. Now, I want to know, is that how the world is going to move forward? Can we say that we are free nations if all we get is sanction, sanction, sanctions when you do things that certain people don't like? Is that what you call democracy? Isn't that what democracy is supposed to be? Allowing people to do their own things? I mean, if you go to Dubai, you go to Dubai, you're going to act like people of Dubai. You must respect the laws of Dubai. You cannot go to Dubai and do your own things. I mean, if you go to India, you have to live like Indian people. You must have a set of rules and understanding of the Indian culture. Why doesn't that apply to Africa when Africa makes its own choice? I mean, let me give you a very simple example. When the president of Zimbabwe got into power, the very first interview he got, it was not on how you're going to better Zimbabwe as a country, but it was more about how are you going to pass into law that men be with other men? Listen to this. Same sex relationships. Never mind. We can put marriage to self. I'm talking about same sexual activity. In our current constitution, it is banned. You can clearly see a very pushy journalist, if not to say arrogant, trying to ask a president to say something he doesn't want to say. The same thing happened in Uganda many years ago. Look at that. What is your message to Western human rights groups? to President Obama, respect, to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender re re people. Respect African societies and their values. If you don't agree, you just keep quiet. Let's manage our society the way we see. If we are wrong, we shall find out by ourselves. Just the way we don't interfere with yours. Mm. Above all, we believe everybody should be able to have their own beliefs. Uh, do whatever they want with their bodies, but just do it where you can do it, where the community does not feel discomforted by you doing what you want to do. Remember, your freedom ends where other people's freedom begins. So it's the respect of the community that matters the most. Let me know how you feel about this, fellas. It's always a great pleasure to hear from you. Uh, YouTube is telling us that you watch videos, but you're not subscribed. Please subscribe if you like what we say, so we can make this much bigger. God bless.